Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm from the blog Short Stories. Today I'm going to narrate a story called Love Stays Eternal. In a dark and cold stormy night, willow trees sweep dangerously in the wind, and the shutters of a house rattled like old bones. In this house, lived a young boy called Alex Reed, who had blonde hair like the grasses of grain ready to be harvested, and green eyes like that of a dark forest. He looked up from his book about ghosts and vampires and other creatures of the night, and stepped wistfully but cautiously at the rain pelting down on his bedroom window and wondered what it would be like to see ghosts and other ghouls. You see, Alex was at an age where he wanted to experiment with the thought of communicating with the dead and recently bought a spirit board to talk to the dead. Another sad but underlying reason why Alex wanted to communicate with the dead was Alex's mother, who died in a car accident a month earlier. Alex did not get a chance to say goodbye to her, as he was overseas visiting his grandparents in Dublin, Ireland. When he heard the news from his dad during his stay in Dublin, he went quietly in his room and did not speak to anyone for a week, not even his grandparents. After a period of mourning, everything went back to normal, but Alex still felt the pain of losing his mother. That was when he decided to buy the spirit board. As he thought about using the spirit board to communicate with it, in order to get a chance to speak with his mother, he thought he heard a low moon coming from downstairs and then somebody whispering his name. As he heard the whisper, Alex, he felt a cold breeze across his right ear and the breeze carried his name with it, almost as if the wind was calling his name. But it made no sense. The windows in his room were shut tight to keep the rain out and his door was closed to the outside living room. So, why would there be a breeze in the room? He pondered with fear, as his hairs on his arms started to stand. Then, a word popped into his mind. Ghost. But as he started to freak out a little, he remembered his mother, and hoped that it was her who was visiting him. He quickly opened his closet door, and took out his spirit board and placed it in the middle of his room with candles surrounding him. As he placed his fingers on the pointer of the board, he felt the pointer move a little and formed the word, Hello. He took a deep breath, tried to stay calm and asked tentatively, Who are you? Is that your mom? After a few seconds, he felt the pointer move again, and this time, he pointed to no. At this, Alex bit back a gasp and chose to stay positive. Maybe this spirit could help me talk to my mother. So he put on a calm face and inquired, May I know who this is? How do you know my name? As he finished his sentence, one of the candles blew out and the pointer started to move again and soon formed the word Larry. Larry? Alex was confused. Who was Larry? He did not know anyone named Larry or knew any of his parents' friends who were named Larry. Then Alex started to get a bit cautious and nervous. Whoever Larry was, 
he seemed to make Alex feel uncomfortable. And that was when he made a mistake of taking his hands off the pointer and leaving the circle of candles. Once he left the circle, all the candles blew out and the whole room plunged into darkness. Alex freaked out and started to sweat as he ran towards his door to try and get out of his room. It slammed shut and was locked by an invisible hand. He then ran to his windows and tried to crawl out of it, but they would not budge, and as he turned back, he felt himself being lifted off the ground and thrown against his bedroom door. As he slammed against it, he heard his ribs crack and the door spin open. In pain, he dragged himself on, out onto the hallway landing. And when he looked towards his bedroom, he saw red glowing eyes and what seemed to be the shadow of a man, who emitted a sound of laughter from his missing mouth and what sounded like a growl. Then, as the man was going to fly towards him, Alex closed his eyes and felt a bright light emerge from the darkness behind him and felt hope and comfort. Right at that moment, he knew it was his mother because she was the only one who made him feel that way when she was alive. She stared at the demon and commanded him to leave the instant in the name of the Lord. The demon hissed and he said, He's mine. But his mother held out a hand and made a bright soul light. He made the whole house light up. The demon screamed and gave one last growl at it before disappearing and with it, the negativity was carried away. Alex turned behind and smiled as tears rolled down his face. Mom, I knew you would save me, he said and helped her. She smiled and pats back. I'll always be with you, no matter what. Don't you worry, pumpkin, she said. Alex looked guilty, and his mom asked, Why do you look so sad, Alex? He replied, because I did not get to say goodbye to you, Mom. She shook her head and ruffled his head. You don't need to feel guilty for not saying goodbye, honey. It wasn't your fault. You were in another country. Besides, I'm still here, and I'll watch over you for as long as you need me. The demon wanted to take you with him, but I asked God for help, and he gave me the strength to save you. So don't worry, Alex. I will not leave you so soon. Ever since that night, Alex started to have hope again and made more friends who supported him throughout his days of sadness. But even when he felt sad, he knew he had his family and friends to support him. He grew up and married a beautiful woman and had three children. However, soon his time had come and as he lay on his deathbed surrounded by his loved ones, he saw his mother appear. And as he took her hand, he died peacefully and followed her to heaven, where they would live together forever. I've come to the end of my story. I hope you liked it. See you next time.